what is the point break and how to find it? Here we have these two rational functions and we are going to find any vertical asymptotes and point breaks for them. So let me work out part B for you because this right here is the harder one. And since you asked what the point breaks are, so let me explain this one first. I believe this is the case when you have a curve, right? The graph of the function and you are just missing a point. And sometimes we'll just put down a circle like that. So some people call this a hole on the graph, yeah? And I think that's what they meant by point breaks. And in this situation, this is also called the removable. Removable. This continuity, because the function is not continuous right here, and you can remove it by just filling the open circle, filling the hole. So that's that. And then of course, the vertical asymptote is the case that you have maybe something like this. And this is the case when the graph you know, becomes vertical when you approach that x value. So these are just uh, graphical ex representation of how vertical asymptotes and point breaks look like. Now, let's talk about how to find them from an equation because we don't have the graph yet. Eh? So, for vertical asymptote, pay close attention to when we have non-zero numbers, a non-zero number on the top, over zero on the bottom. Okay, but the key right here is that this right here is after we reduce the rational function. After you reduce. Okay. And then for the point breaks, pay attention to the following. 0 over 0. 0 on the top and also 0 on the bottom. That is what you pay attention to. But be careful with this. You want to find the x value that will give you 0 over 0. Okay. That's before. Right? Before. You reduce. Right? Keep that in mind. This one is right after you is after you reduce, and this is before you reduce. If you reduce it already, then you don't see the zero over zero anymore. So yeah, be careful with that. However, there could be some tricky questions to rational functions. This right here is actually not complete. There's a second part to it. I will write it down. It's not happening for this rational function. If you want to see a case that like a tricky question, you can check out the video in the description. Point breaks or removable discontinuity is when you get 0 over 0 before you reduce and not, right, you, and you don't get non 0 over 0 after you reduce. Because otherwise, you will still have a vertical asymptote. Right, but again, we do not have that situation here. And notice that I put down the domain right here. Because these right here, they all surely go together. For the domain of a rational function, let's also review that. We have a top over bottom expression. For domain, go ahead, look at the original, set the bottom not equal to zero. And in fact, you should do this first all the time because the numbers that you get right here are the candidates for being vertical asymptotes or point breaks. So let's go ahead and just start with that. Look at the original denominator and then set it not equal to zero. x squared plus 7x plus 12, make it not equal to zero. This is a quadratic trinomial. We can factor it. x times x gives us x squared. What times what give us 12? Together we get 7. 3 and 4. Okay, good. So plus 3 plus 4. Not equal to 0. And then to solve this, you first put x plus 3 not equal to 0. And then you put x plus 4 not equal to 0. So you get this right here. x cannot be equal to negative 3. And then this right here. x cannot be negative 4. So for the domain for this rational function is all real numbers, all real 
numbers except x equals negative 3, x equals negative 4. I put an equal sign here because I used the word except, so meaning how except for these two values, right? So except. But anyway, though, this right here helps. What? This and that. Now, this is how we do it. Let's determine the point breaks first. We have to make sure we get 0 over 0 before we reduce, right? Before we redu reduce. So if you put negative 3 into all the x's, you will see the following. You will get 2 times negative 3 and then square plus 6 times negative 3 over, you get negative 3 square plus 7 times negative 3 and then plus 12. On the bottom we know is 0 because we set it to be 0. On the top though, 3 squared is 9, right? Negative 3 squared is positive 9 times 2 is positive 18 and then this and that is minus 18. So we have 0 over 0. Good. But you have to be careful though. 0 over 0 before you reduce and then you have to make sure after you reduce you don't get 0 over 0. Have a look right here. Right, I'm just going to erase this right here. Because if we factor this, we get, we can factor out 2x on the top. And then we get x plus 3 here. Yeah. And then for the bottom, we get x plus 3 times x plus 4. As you can see, negative 3 will make this 0, likewise that 0. So that's the point breaks. So I will tell you add x equals negative 3. And in fact, after you reduce, you can see that y is equal to 2x over x plus 4. But remember, this function, originally, you had to make sure x cannot be negative 3 and x cannot be negative 4 because we did that over there. So, for this function, you will still have to mention that x cannot be equal to negative 3. That is going to be a point break on the graph. Now, if you look at this, you can see that when x is negative 4, you make the 0 on the bottom. And check this out. I'm going to put negative 4 in here. We will get 2 times negative 4 over negative 4 plus 4. And on the top, we get negative 8. On the bottom, we get 0. This right here is what? This right here is a non-zero case over 0. That is a vertical asymptote case. So I will tell you that add x equals negative 4. OK, so in fact, you don't have to worry about that after you reduce. You could actually just start it with the original. You still get non-zero over 0. Um, so let me actually think about it. Do I want to say after you reduce? Yeah, I, I will still keep after you reduce because if you after reduce, you can just put this to be 0. I think it's easier that way. Look, you can just say, hey, x plus 4 cannot be 0, meaning x cannot be equal to negative 4. But this right here gives you a vertical asymptote. Yeah, just like that. Now, let me show you a picture right here. This is how the graph of this function looks like. As you can see, when x is negative 3, we will have an open circle. And you also should know the coordinate of the open circle. To do so, well, you cannot put negative 3 into the original. But what you can do is, you can put negative 3 into the after reduced one, right? Into the simplified one. So go ahead and do that. We will get 2 times negative 3 over negative 3 plus 4. And that will give us negative 6 over positive 1, which is negative 6. And that will give you the y value. So that's negative 6. So in fact, the point break, you can be more specific and say the point is negative 3, negative 6. So negative 3, 
comma negative six. And this right here, point break. And this right here is a crucial part when you start calculus. So hopefully this right here helps. Let me know if you have any other questions.